Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and have you subscribed to Agree to Disagree? If not, why haven't you? Now this video is actually about something called Agree to Disagree. However, this Agree to Disagree is in no way related to Conspiracy Cats and the Creaky Blinders Agree to Disagree, unfortunately. Instead, this Agree to Disagree is from Lad Bible, where they put two opposing views together and they agree or disagree. So in this agree to disagree, what they did is they put a flat earther up against a scientist. And I must say, the scientist did make quite a few good points. However, I feel like they could have made some better points. But to be fair, the scientist did have to respond to the points right away, whereas I get as much time as I want to record this video. Uh, a man actually went, um, traveled to try and find the actual telemetry data of the moon landing happening, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, 700 boxes of magnetic tapes telemetry data is gone. There's, they have no idea where it is. Actually, it's very, very hard to keep magnetic tape. You're not trying to seriously say Led Zeppelin didn't record Led Zepp 1 because that tape no longer exists anymore. We're literally talking about uh, supposedly the, one of the greatest uh, ever feats of mankind. Well, so yes, a lot of the telemetry data is missing. Some of it has been recovered, but for the most part, they don't know where it is. So there are a number of reasons for this, but one of the biggest reasons that I'd say would be bad record keeping. They were labelled as magnetic tapes when they went into storage. Magnetic tapes could be a lot of different things. In addition to this, in the 1970s, NASA was experiencing a shortage of magnetic tapes. So they decided to reuse some of them. So they withdrew 40,000 boxes for reuse. That is a lot of boxes. So when they withdrew them, there wasn't any label on them saying, oh, this is from the Apollo, which would have made someone go, uh, maybe we shouldn't tape over this. Instead, they just went, oh, this is just an ordinary magnetic tape. But, but, it's not, but it's not evidence. If someone comes in and says, I've seen a fairy in my garden, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I don't have to look under every single blade of grass to say that there wasn't a fairy in the garden, of course, right? Yeah. Because your claim is so outlandish. And the scientist here is completely right. What he is describing is Hitchens razor. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Unfortunately, flat earthers have no evidence. What I would argue is that what is outlandish is saying that in the 1960s, you put men into a, a metal rocket mm -hmm. and you shot them through a near perfect vacuum 250,000 miles away. Mm -hmm. They landed safely on a rock 250,000 miles away and then came back. Well, it is actually perfectly reasonable to be able to send people to the moon in 1969 because faking it would have been pretty difficult. I'll leave a link to the video that I'm referencing in the description. However, has anyone actually tried faking a moon landing using only technology from 1969? I haven't seen anyone yet. Just remember to make sure that the shadows on the ground are parallel to each other and that the sky is pitch black. That would have been virtually impossible back in 1969. And then we just didn't go back. That was actually predicted. So if, if you go back to the, there was a, some papers by, uh, by Arthur C. Clarke, and he predicted that mankind would try it and that we would go there a couple of times we would not do it very often because it was just economically unviable so i already knew about the economic reasons of why nasa didn't return to the moon but i didn't know that that was actually predicted so i guess we all learned something today except for those that have an allergy to learning yay Now there's one thing that I've got to point out here, because I know that a flat earther will come along to the comments section with his mouth frothing going, why do you trust NASA? Don't you know that the government always lies to people? And I mean, yeah, the government does lie, but the government and NASA are kind of two different things. Even though NASA may be funded by the government, NASA isn't the government. If it were the government, or at least had significant control over the government, you'd think that it would get paid maybe about as much as the military gets paid, wouldn't you? I would say that basically everything that the majority of what NASA produce are, 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 is fiction. I, I, I find it very difficult to understand what the motivation for NASA just to be, just to be, be a sort of enormous lying machine. Say there, there were land masses found beyond what we're told is the end pole of the Earth. 
You don't want to keep those public knowledge because there's resources here that can be taken advantage of by uh, people in high positions of power. What do you do? The problem with that line of reasoning is not only do you have to assume that the earth is flat, you also have to assume that there are lands beyond the ice wall that keeps the white walkers out. But even if we assume that's true, the ancient Greeks, they didn't even know about America. What makes you think that they're going to know about some lands that you have to cross an inhospitable wasteland to get to? And let's say that by some divine miracle, the Greeks somehow did know about the land masses beyond Antarctica. They'd also have to have the foresight to know that their descendants would want to control people by using the Earth as a globe to be able to control people to stop them from going to land masses beyond Antarctica. Do you see how delusional that sounds? But who, but who are these people in, in these high positions of power? Because we, we've had generations mm -hmm. since then. And what about what are the Russians and the Chinese and the, and the mean, this, South and the North Koreans and the South Koreans and I, the Australians? I, and the, I would say what are they doing? What are they doing? Point, I would say when it gets to a certain point, they're all involved. So let me get this straight. Despite multiple governments having been overthrown in the past two hundred years alone, when a new leader was established, not one of these new leaders decided to say, "By the way, it's a blank slate, and we've discovered that the old government was lying and that the Earth is flat." Instead, despite having fundamental ideological differences with their enemies, they only pretended to hate each other and were actually working together to keep a secret about the earth being flat because of ancient divine revelation from Zeus. China, China's all these space agencies, every single one of these space agencies are doing the same thing. In fact, if you look at China's work, it is some of the worst faking of space that's ever happened. You can see bubbles coming out of their helmets. It's, it's a joke. So I feel like because this is agree to disagree, that I should let Baldy Cats handle this. Also, here's a really good explanation for the bubbles in space. You think they're in a pool, don't you? Not in space, you moron. So, have you ever considered the fact that the bubbles you see tend to go off in whatever direction they fancy? Do bubbles of water behave like that on Earth? Because in reality, which I know is a strange concept for a flat Earther, all that's actually happening is as the astronauts exit the ISS through the airlock, the air in it is vented into space. As the air expands, it cools. The water vapour in the air freezes into small ice crystals. These crystals then slowly sublimate, i.e. they turn directly into water vapour so they do not contribute to the space debris problem. But if you'd rather believe that they're swimming around in a pool, <laughs> that's entirely up to you, you muppet. It appears that he's not entirely convinced on that, is he? Maybe he could be like Seek Truth, Speak Truth and be convinced that it is actually round. Flat is probably the most, um, the most probable. We cannot prove motion. Without motion, none of it works. So there are a couple of problems with that. Let's say that the Earth isn't spinning. Okay, doesn't make it flat. Could still be a globe that's just not spinning. Secondly, if we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. Of course, that is not the only thing that shows that the Earth is spinning. You've also got the yacht Voss effect, or it Voss effect, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. You've also got things being slightly heavier the closer they get to the poles. You've also got Coriolis effect, and you've got Foucault's pendulum. There is a lot of evidence that the Earth is spinning, and it's not hard to find either. And second, obviously, being the major one, is that we can't detect curvature. The globe model's a little bit problematic. There's plenty of experiments that show the curvature of the Earth. I happen to live by the coast. Mm -hmm. I've got a really expansive view out onto the Atlantic, and I can see the ships, and I can see them dip down over the horizon. So I've physically seen the curvature for myself. Right. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could also get into a, a high altitude jet and actually physically see the curvature of the Earth. Pilots see it all the time. A could. lot of physicists will completely disagree with you. Firstly, Neil deGrasse Tyson is a physicist, not a lot of physicists. Secondly, just because someone says something doesn't mean that it's true. And thirdly, 
Do you think there may be a little bit more nuance to it? Do you remember when Felix Baumgartner did the jump, yeah. the Red Bull jump, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he'll tell you, he'll be the first to tell you that they were using a fisheye lens in the camera because from his altitude, it would have been impossible to see curvature. So I'm gonna be a bit lenient towards the Flat Earther because in this kind of situation, it is hard to provide citations. But I couldn't find anything that says that Felix said that they had to use a fisheye lens because seeing the curvature would be impossible. My guess is that they just used fisheye lens to exaggerate the curvature. It was supposed to be on the edge of space. And I agree with you, if you're in a jet or a bomber, you may see a curve to the earth when you're high. However, that's because you're in glass shaped like this. Plenty of pilots who fly passenger jets will tell you that it's, it's, it's flat the whole way around. Except Greater Sapien was on a passenger flight and he actually recorded the curvature of the earth. There is also footage of the curvature of the Earth from a high altitude balloon. And before flat earthers start saying, oh, but that's got fisheye lens. Why would a flat earther have a fisheye lens on a camera that they are putting on a balloon to show that there is no curve, hmm? Scientific skepticism has to take an evidence-based approach. And I think this is where you could bring in something like Occam's razor, is say, what of these two different things requires us to have the least amount of assumptions? Uh, stationary and flat versus uh, globular and moving, yeah. right? I'm looking around. I feel like I'm standing still. I don't feel like anything is moving. So the least amount of assumptions in my, it, yeah. based on Occam's razor, is that I am still. That is not quite how it works. When I'm on an airplane, I feel stationary. I do not feel like I'm moving at all doesn't mean that I am though. And when it comes to Occam's razor, you can't just look at one particular aspect that you think you've solved. You've got to look at all the other problems that you introduce as well. And there are a lot when it comes to Flat Earth. Newton's laws, they've been unbelievably successful in describing the world and, and predicting things and bringing us new technology, it's not that they're wrong, they're just not fully described yet. Well, Newton was categorically wrong. I admire your optimism, yeah. however, I, I don't feel like those gaps will ever be filled. And there's still no argument against gravity in there. And also, saying that something is just a theory. It's kind of ridiculous because a theory means that it has a whole lot of evidence backing it up. That's how scientists use the term anyway. I'm actually rather surprised that the scientist did not point that out. Anything that you see, you're almost having to start from scratch. No, no, which no. Which no, is no, no. which see, is essentially is why you almost have a mm -hmm. a you know a an, a BC style knowledge of things like flat Earth. That there, that's a pretty good roast, to be honest. No, it's, it's certainly not about. archaic because it, up until uh, NASA was founded and we were shown so yeah. so so called proof, this this argument has never died. We the flat Earth has been a a contender in this argument between globe it's and Earth always, for a long no, time. It's been fringe it, for two and a half thousand years. No, one of the big mistakes that flat Earthers make, and even I was guilty of this myself until very recently, is thinking that we only discovered that the Earth was a globe about four hundred years ago when that is simply not true. This misconception is based on a couple of things. It's based on people wanting to discredit religion, but it's also based on people lumping together geocentrism with flat earth. In reality, the first notable person to believe that the earth was flat over the past two millennia was Samuel Robotham. That's fringe. We're both sure. probably skeptics. Did someone say skeptic? But. My form of skepticism is uh, a scientific skepticism. I would actually disagree and say that my form of skepticism is a scientific skepticism because it follows uh, the scientific method, natural science. This is basically a no you argument. My form of skepticism is best. No minors, no minors, no minors. It kind of sounded like I was being a bouncer to a nightclub there. No minors. <laughs> but anyway, when it comes to flat earthers, they like to say that they abide by the scientific method. But the problem is, is that they tend to misunderstand the scientific method and say that it's a rigid way of how science must be done. Except there is no rigid way of how science must be done. 
I'm not trying to devalue the scientific method, or at least Flat Earthers' understandings of the scientific method, but different problems require different solutions. One of my favorite physicists ever uh, was Richard Feynman, and he mm -hmm. described science in a, in a fantastic way. He said, the steps of science is that we observe, then we guess. That's it, it's mm -hmm. a guess. Mm -hmm. We use nature and experimentation to either verify or nullify that guess. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. Now, I mostly agree with that sentiment, although there is a bit of nuance. Like, let's say that you're 90% right and 10% wrong. There's no reason to throw out a theory just because it's 10% wrong. It's still useful for that 90%. However, one of the th important things is that when you're experimenting on something like a theory, you have to understand the theory first. If you don't actually understand the theory that you're experimenting on, then when you go to experiment on it, and it appears to be completely off, it's not actually the theory that's wrong, it's you. For example, when flat earthers state that water doesn't stick to a spinning tennis ball, that's not what gravity says should happen. Gravity doesn't say that water should stick to a spinning tennis ball. He is a fantastic uh, advocate of science and he would, be, he would of course be horrified by flat earth, he genuinely would. You can actually see something along the lines of disappointment in his face because if Richard Feynman were alive today, he would not be a flat earther, and he would certainly not be convinced by flat earth arguments. Anytime I talk about something controversial, they will make sure that they've put an article under my video to say what the opposite of what I'm saying is true. But that's not censorship. If a comment is left on your video that says the opposite of what your video is saying, that's not censorship. I'm not being censored by flat earthers because they comment that the earth is flat. If a video is recommended next to your video that says the opposite of what your video is saying, that's not censorship either. So why is an article underneath your video that says the opposite of what your video is saying censorship? People can still watch your video. Also, a cool little thing to do would be to attempt to debunk the little article under your video. I'm kind of disappointed that I don't create pseudo-scientific bollocks on YouTube because then that would be something that I could do. Why would you need to censor this kind of information if it's so clearly wrong? Let's face it, if, if we were talking about a much more offensive idea, if we, if we look at an example, would you be happy with uh, like na uh, YouTube downplaying Nazi videos? It's a different... I think we're talking about something completely different when we're talking about um, you know someone promoting Nazism someone promoting hate towards a group of people whereas when we're discussing things like flat earth we're discussing ideas except Nazis are discussing ideas too it's just that when it comes to flat earth it's a lot more difficult to see the harm that it causes and a Nazi could say that oh I don't actually hate Jewish people I just don't think that it's right for a Jewish person to say that six million cookies could be baked in six years I mean technically they are discussing ideas but ideas can always be harmful especially if they're predicated on misinformation and before flat earthers try to say that flat earth is harmless and mother approved the harm with flat earth is that it can lead to a way of thinking which leads to other conspiracies being adopted more harmful conspiracies being adopted but anyway, that's it for this video. I will leave a link in the description if you want to go check out the original video in its entirety. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus, Holmes, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie, String News One, Ash Panash, Curtis Reynolds, and Mori. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. Just click over there. It's always appreciated. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.